Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Last night I did a live webcast of the Solar Dynamics Observatory and we watched it pass into Earth's shadow. Tonight I'm going to take the images from this time lapse, astrometrically solve them, calculate SDO's orbit, and then verify that it should have passed into Earth's shadow at the time that we witnessed it happening. First up, here's a stitched mosaic of all the images from the time lapse you just saw. They've been aligned relative to the stars and added together so that SDO's position in each image is revealed. This mosaic was then astrometrically solved so that the precise coordinates of SDO could be measured. You can see SDO's brightness trail off as it goes into Earth's shadow in the final frames. The image was successfully solved astrometrically, and I'll include a link where you can download the astrometrically solved image for yourself in the video description. The position of SDO from each frame was then measured, except for a few frames where SDO's image was smeared by vibrations. Orbital calculations were then performed using the astrometry, and the resulting orbit fits the observations extremely well, with residuals ranging from zero to three thousandths of a degree. Time residuals are also all under one second, which is expected since the timings were taken from the headers in the FITS files of the raw images. You can see all of the observations in standard IOD format in this file, along with the resulting TLE that was calculated at the bottom and a summary of the orbit at the top. I'll include a link to this file in the video description as well. So now that we've calculated the orbit of SDO from the observations last night, we can import that orbit into other programs and see what SDO saw from its perspective in space. I've imported that orbit into Celestia, as seen here and you can see the edge of the Earth's atmosphere approaching the sun. The time of this image corresponds to the beginning of the time lapse recorded by my telescope last night. And now we'll compare these images to images actually taken by SDO at the same points in time. And as expected, the first image from SDO shows an unobscured sun. Now we see that the sun should start to be about half eclipsed and the atmosphere will make that edge hazy, and indeed that's what we see from SDO. Now at the next time point, there's only a sliver of the sun left peeking out from behind the Earth. And that is what we see from SDO, just a small sliver of the sun left peeking out. At the next time point, the sun should be fully eclipsed by the Earth according to SDO's orbit, and indeed that is what we see, there's no sun left. Now we can take the data that we've collected and actually extrapolate it backwards in time and run the orbit backwards and see what SDO had seen in about the last week or so. Now it turns out that back on September 1st, there was not only an Earth eclipse of the sun, but actually a double eclipse where the moon also happened to be in front of the sun when SDO re-emerged into sunlight from behind Earth's shadow. We can actually confirm that's what it was by taking the orbital information that was just calculated from last night's observations and running that backwards to see what would have been seen from SDO's orbit on September 1st. First of all, though, let's take a look at the actual video from SDO itself. So there we can see Earth with its hazy atmosphere eclipsing the sun at the same time as the sharp, well-defined edge of the moon is also eclipsing the sun. We can compare this video to a video recorded with Celestia using the same orbital information we just calculated and see that the same thing was exactly what should have happened given SDO's orbit. So here we go. Time is accelerated 100 times in my video. In NASA's video, it's accelerated 320 times when they show the simulation for comparison. I've cut out some of the middle to cut to the end where all the action is. So there it is, a double eclipse is exactly what should have happened given SDO's orbit, and I was able to confirm this using observations from my own telescope.